Well, welcome to DIY Irving Home Camper's Life. My name's Greg. Next video in our series on our RV electrical system upgrade. As you can see, I've got quite a few components laid out. Some of them I've already talked about in previous videos, and some I haven't yet. Uh, specifically, the Renergy 2000 watt inverter. This is a pure sign inverter. Um, we'll do a video later on that. Today, though, I want to go over uh, getting some cables made. Uh, as you see, I've already got one cable made up. It is a one aught cable. This is going to be the negative. Uh, and it, this is from the shunt to the inverter. This will be going directly to the uh, battery's negative. That way we can use our battery monitor and get the accurate uh, reading of where our battery is and the status of our charging or discharging. There is also be another uh, wire coming off of it, but it will be a four gauge and that will actually run over here to the negative bus bar that we have right here. So all the negatives will come into that. So I'm going to go ahead and make up the positive cable from this breaker on over. And again, I'm using one aught cable. And this specifically is one aught welding cable. Very capable of handling the loads that uh, we are going to be pulling from this 2000 with the whole trailer system and the length of run. So let's start by putting this uh, lug on to this cable. So we'll go ahead and pull that off. Get that off. Now, as you can see, I had everything laid out just kind of where I wanted it, just kind of making sure stuff's going to work. So, to do this properly, what we're going to do is we're going to measure out how much sheathing I need to cut off. So, I've got my thumb there, I've got it figured out. Now, they have some tools that you can use, you can purchase for this, or just using a utility knife, just carefully go around and score it. Don't cut all the way through. I'll show you a little trick. So I haven't I haven't cut all the way through, but now let me come around. So I haven't come all the way through, but now I'm just going to bend it and just start working it around. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to right there start uh, <coughs> ripping it apart or tearing it, and we'll be able to get a clean cut and not lose any of the wires. We don't want to cut wires. That's not good. The reason we got this big wire is because we need the out of it. Just a little extra there. And there it is. Got that off. Just straighten that up. Didn't lose any wires. That looks good. Here is our lug. Now this is a copper lug. It's got aluminum over it. It's for corrosion. Help keep it from corroding. Let me grab. This is a straight copper lug. This is one of the other lugs that we have that I'm using. And it's just different sizes of holes um, and the availability that I had. We'll be using some heat shrink tubing and I got it in a, a large piece. Uh, this large piece was uh, cheaper than two smaller pieces. Unfortunately, it's all black, so I'll show you something in a second because we are running positives. But if you need to, you might have to put that over before you put the lug on. Luckily, it'll fit right over, so I don't have to worry about that. Let's take and get a little twist on those cables, make sure everything's together because we want to get every cable. That we can, excuse me, every piece of wire in this. So let me take a second and get that. Take your time. All right, so with some persistence, this is fairly tight around this one aught. I've got one two strands right there. I can live with that. I'll clean those up real quick and then we'll get that we'll get it crimped and put heat shrink tube over it. Alright, 
right, so now let's go ahead and crimp this lug. What I'm using today is the IWISS terminal crimp tool. This is rate, this is set from eight gauge to one aught, so it should work just fine, and it has. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in, and get everything where I need it, and we're gonna crimp and we're gonna close it all the way. That so comes completely together. Release it. I gave it a little bit of a pinch over on this side, but we've got it close. We're going to go ahead and do one more right here because we can. We've got enough room. And I think that that gives a better crimp, personally. So we'll even rotate it over. We'll change that pinch point. There we go. And that would be a good solid connection. I come back. We'll go ahead and temporarily be back in place. Because now we need to measure out how long we want this piece. I like that. Let me get the cutters. So right, like that spot right there, let's go ahead and cut this. And I'll come back to you once I get this ready to crimp. Because we're going to be using copper lug this time. Or correction, this style lug versus the other one. Both of them are copper. So, what you'll notice this is both of these are one aught lugs for one aught wire. This one was really, really tight to try to get the wire on. This is uh, more designed for uh, residential electrical with less uh, strands. And this one right here is more designed for those extra strands because it kind of gets kind of a bit harder to get all of them in. So there we go. We've got that on there. We'll go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to do two pinches. Set in place. Make sure you hold it in place until you get it start to crimp and go down. And then you can let off or let go of the cable. There we are, we're all the way closed. And release. Now we're going to take and spin it 180. We're going to do one more crimp on it. We'll compare the ends. So you can see how that one crushed out, but it is solid. It's not going to come apart. And then, then this one, which we've got smaller little pinches on it, both of them are not going anywhere. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and put our heat shrink tube on it. I've got a heater here or a heat gun. Let's set it right there. 
I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of hold it where I want it. Turn it on. Here's our ends, heat shrink tube are on, let's get you, there you go, nice clean all the way around, again, nice clean all the way around, actually I can just touch that one up a little bit more, I'm going to do that in a second, now we've got this all ready to hook up, there's one thing I want to do though, before I get too much further in, and that is, let's clean this up, because that is a positive cable, this is a positive wire. I want to make sure that I identify it as positive since I didn't have any red uh, heat shriek available or any red cable. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to take red electrical tape and wrap my end. And I'll do both ends on this short length. Oop, you know what? Give me a second. I forgot to uh, finish uh, shrinking that. Okay, so now we're going to come back in. And when you do put the shrink tube on, you want to make sure that it does not interfere with um, any of the contact points when you uh, actually tighten that up to your uh, whatever it's going to. So we've got that. And just for the sake of showing you, if this was a long wire or a long cable, before I got done, two options is I would either spiral wrap it or roughly every foot or so, I would go ahead and take and wrap some red tape around it. That way, um, if it's a longer piece, you can identify that that is the positive. So let's go ahead and uh, put this one on. And again, this is all mocked up. Nothing is torqued down, nothing is tightened up. Actually, you actually take the bolt off, put the lug on, then put the bolt back in. But like I say, I am doing a mock-up. So, there we go. We've got a couple wires made, cables made, excuse me, for this. So we're starting to move forward. Thoughts on uh, our IWISS uh, crimper. Um, it does, yeah, I mean, it does the job. It crimped them down. It did kind of put a pinch on the lug, uh, but it did not uh, appear to be a issue. Cable cutters cut just fine. So as far as that, for an inexpensive pair um, of uh, crimpers that go from 8 gauge to 1 aught, and all you have to do is just press the button right there, spin the head for the different sizes, and there's one on each side. 
seems to be pretty good so not too bad heat shrink tubing uh, let me come in I'm going to show you something real quick on this this is not your uh, Harbor Freight um, shrink tube okay this is rated at 600 volts this particular stuff and if you see that uh, shiny that is some sealant adhesive so as you heat it up that softens up and it will actually seal the wire to the lug help prevent moisture from getting in keeping it from corroding and stuff like that um, that is usually doesn't come on your cheaper uh, shrink tubing now I do have Harbor Freight shrink tubing I do buy it okay I got a lot of it for a lot of 12 volt stuff that I use um, a lot of light gauge stuff I don't mind using it and the best part about it is if I want to I can put two three layers on if I feel I need it um, a lot of times I will take and I use multi I'll to use a couple of these then put it into another one and then into another one so it's got multiple layers but for high voltage high amperage uh, items go with a quality shrink tubing I'm going to leave the video there today. Um, there's more to come, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you uh, learned a little bit about uh, crimping cables. Uh, if you're interested in looking at these, maybe give you insight if you want to pick them up or not. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button, uh, subscribe, and share the video. And until the next one in the series, you have a great day.